So before I begin, I want to say thank you. Thank you for listening to this. I do not take it lightly. The comments and the polls that I do on Spotify, they are so fun. I love seeing just the responses. And then also you just reaching out. It means the world. Um, I want to say hello to Helen, who is studying at a university. She reached out and just dropped a note saying that the podcast is really helping her get through some stressful times. And so times like this, I don't take that for granted. So Helen, good luck with your studies. And I hope you continue to find some peace and calm. But do reach out as I truly love hearing from you. Thank you. And now let's continue with the show. Do you remember in that movie, Castaway, when Tom Hanks, whose character Chuck Nolan, ends up all by himself on an empty island? It's just him and miles of ocean. The ultimate alone time. It really, well, it gets you to think about what it's like to be totally on your own, right? I mean, as much as I want to ask, if you were stranded on an island, that question... But that's for another episode, maybe. But as much as we sometimes think that we want to be stranded, right? All alone on an island of bliss and solitude with only the waves serenading the shore. The reality is being truly isolated, it's not as peaceful as it sounds. And as an extreme introvert, yeah, I kind of agree. A lot of you have shared with me how loneliness feels. It's like that scene in the movie with Tom Hanks, where he's all alone on this island, surrounded by endless water, yet unable to drink anything. Water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. We experience something similar in life, don't we? Even though we are surrounded by people every day, making a real connection can feel impossible. It's like being in a crowd, right? Thirsty for genuine friendship, yet finding not one to quench that thirst. But here's a thought. Unlike his character, Chuck, who at least had Wilson, the volleyball, to keep him company, we find ourselves grappling with our own unique kind of solitude, and one where there's, well, there's no volleyball named Wilson to lean on. You ever feel like you're surrounded by people, but just totally alone? This feeling is more common than we might think, yet it's rarely talked about. So we are going to explore the quiet battle with isolation, uncovering ways to reconnect to those around us and discovering how to build bridges that lead us towards a sense of connection and belonging within our communities. Let's go. I'm Chad Lawson, and let's calm it down in three, two, one. Imagine you're in a story like the one from Castaway, where Tom Hanks is all alone on an island. But for you, it's not about being on a real island. Instead, you feel alone, even when you're around lots of people. Your quote-unquote island is made up of quiet nights at home, lots of time spent on your phone, and feeling like you're just, well, all alone, even in a crowd. But this kind of loneliness, it's not something you choose. It's like being stuck where, even though there are people everywhere, you really just don't feel connected. And deep down, you're actually wishing for a real friend or just a really good chat and something that just feels genuine, feels warm. Even though we can talk to anyone these days because of our phones or just the the culture or social media, sometimes these chats, they don't really feel personal, let alone real, even, especially through a screen. And it's an odd truth that even in a world where we are constantly connected through text and through screens, we can still find ourselves just drowning in loneliness. The real challenge lies not in finding people. I mean, they are everywhere. But just creating that genuine, meaningful connection, right? 
Imagine your personal spaces, right? Be it a home or your workplace or any other place that you frequent. Imagine this being your island of isolation. This doesn't have to be permanent. I'm going to say that again. This doesn't have to be permanent because change is, well, it's actually within your reach. Because moving beyond the superficial interactions of texting and scrolling and likes involves engaging. Did you hear that? It involves engaging. Engaging in meaningful conversations, spending quality time with people, and just maybe joining clubs or groups that align with your interest. You do have interest, and guess what? There are groups out there with similar interests, right? And each effort you make to reach out, it slowly chips away at the walls that have built around that solitude, drawing you closer to just being together with people that are like-minded, right? So we're going to figure out, let's figure out why you might feel so lonely, even when you are super busy or always on your phone or always around a group of people. Let's find out why first you feel lonely. I want you to imagine these next few ideas as invisible walls that make it seem like you're stuck on your own small island. And the very first one, which I know I am far too guilty of, is too much work. If you're always working, it's like being surrounded by a huge ocean of tasks. Yes been there. There's so much to do that you can't find time to, to hang out or to talk with friends or be with the kids or to even just sit in some quiet solitude for a second because, well, there's too much to do. And this can actually make you feel pretty lonely, right? But take a moment to see how being super busy with work stops you from spending time with the people you like being with. Take the time to sit and ask, how busy work? Is it just busy or is it actually work? And find times to carve that out where you can be with others. Another thing is always online, never in person. Mm. Always online, never in person. Imagine your island is covered in this really thick fog, right? But that fog is made up of text and emails and social media likes instead of, well, just real fog. It might seem like you're connected to lots of people, but it's not the same as talking face to face. These online chats, they can't give you the warm, happy feeling that comes from just being with someone and seeing their body cues and seeing their smiles and hearing their laughs. Yes, screens are handy and they're convenient because they allow us to interact on our own schedule and respond in when we choose to, if we decide to respond at all. But have you ever noticed how sometimes your phone or your computer, it starts to feel like your only friend? Always online, never in person. And another reason why we may feel lonely is because we are scared to reach out. Mm. Picture the sea around your island with big waves and strong winds. And just off the shore, oh my gosh, you see a rescue ship. It's so close. It's so within reach. But these waves and the winds, well, they seem terrifying, making you too scared to even try and leave. This is like being afraid to make new friends or call someone because you worry they might not like you or they might think that you're weird or maybe that you're just not enough. And so this fear keeps you from reaching out, keeps you from feeling accepted, a part of something making you feel even more alone. Let me ask, 
What are you scared of when it comes to talking to people or making friends? Is it fear? Is it fear of rejection or worrying that you're not going to fit in? Or maybe it's the anxiety of saying the wrong things. But, you know, I did an episode on this a couple of um, episodes back, and it's called Name It to Tame It. And a lot of times we're just so afraid of making friends, but it's when we sit down and actually say, okay, why? Why am I afraid? That we begin to peel that back and then we begin to see that being afraid is just a representation of something that we can actually work through, right? So going back to that question, what are you scared of when it comes to talking to people or making friends? Figuring out the fear, you can actually begin to figure out your friends. Understanding these invisible walls into why you feel lonely. This is the first step to breaking everything down. It's like realizing there's a way off your island and finding paths to real friendships with others. Each thing that makes you feel stuck is actually something you can change. It is. Little by little, each thing that makes you feel stuck is actually something that you can change. Little by little, to start feeling more connected to the world around you. Next, I want to bring up what I call the echo of silence. When we talk about the echo of silence, we're thinking about those times when everything gets really quiet. You know, those moments when it feels like the whole world has pressed the pause button and you're left alone with your thoughts. Oh, that can be so scary sometimes. And this quiet can really feel different depending on who you are. For some people, this silence is like a cozy blanket, right? It's this peaceful break where you can just breathe and think and get some clarity. And if you're one of these people, you might use this quiet time to recharge your batteries, right? To, to get a fresh outlook on things and just ah, exhale. But for others, eh, silence not so comfortable. Instead of feeling peaceful, it feels too empty. It makes you more aware of feeling lonely or cut off from everyone else. Thoughts, they can be dangerous things. It's like when there's no noise to distract you, you start thinking about all the stuff that you usually try to avoid, especially feeling like you're all on your own. A lot of times we don't want to think about that. And so quiet just brings that even louder, right? Thinking about how you feel when it's quiet can tell you a lot about your own feelings, about your own loneliness. So do you look for these quiet times because they make you feel good? Or do you try to avoid them by staying busy or just finding ways to make noise? Because... Knowing this about yourself will help you figure out what you need more of. Whether that's hanging out with others to fill up the quiet or getting more used to being by yourself during these times. But I want to emphasize something really important. Understanding how you connect with silence isn't about judging yourself. It's about knowing what you need. I'm going to say that again. Understanding how you connect with silence is not about judging yourself. It's about knowing what you need. Maybe you need more friends around. Or maybe you need to find peace and being alone. And both of those are totally okay. Listening to the silence is like listening to your own needs. And then figuring out a best way to take care of yourself. That can mean finding more people to be with or just getting comfy as a party of one. And as we think about what we need to feel good inside, it's important to remember our bodies need care too, not just our minds. I've got something really cool I want to tell you about that makes eating well easy and fits right into taking good care of ourselves. Let's talk about making choices that support not just our emotional well-being, but our physical health, too. Factor meals. With Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals, taking care of your nutrition becomes effortless. 
Imagine having chef-crafted and dietitian-approved meals delivered straight to your door, ready whenever you are, with over 35 options each week, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more, plus over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons. Your meal planning, it just got a whole lot easier and tastier. Think of Factor as your culinary companion on the path to feeling great. These two-minute meals are your quick fix to fueling up with quality food no matter how busy life gets. And with snacks, smoothies, and more, every part of your day is covered. I love their pressed juices. They are fantastic. But it's not just convenience. It's a choice. It's a choice for wellness that fits right into your schedule, offering 6 to 18 meals per week that you can adjust, pause, or reschedule anytime. Best of all, there's no prep, no mess, and you can get back to sitting on the couch or being with friends. If you're ready to make your week feel good with Factor Meals, head to factormeals.com backslash com, C-A-L-M, five zero, and use the code COM50 to get 50% off your first box. That's COM50 at factor, F-A-C-T-O-R, meals, M-E-A-L-S, dot com backslash com 50 embrace the ease of delicious nutritious meals and give yourself the time you deserve to focus on what truly matters connecting with yourself and those around you now eating well helps us feel better and ready to connect with others good food is one way to show ourselves love and it also fits into taking care of our whole selves now with that in mind, let's get back to talking about how we can find ways to feel more connected and part of a bigger community. And one of the ways that we do this is by getting to know your lonely moments. Notice when you felt lonely. Right? Keep an eye out for those times when loneliness hits you. Is it late at night or maybe in a crowded place where you feel mm, just left out? Where is that space then? And spotting these moments helps you see patterns in your loneliness. And then find out why you feel lonely. I know, it's an odd question, but do we ever ask? I mean, once you know when you feel lonely, your environment, where you are, ask yourself, what's going on? What's going on around those times? Is it work? Are you in the office? Are you feeling stressed out? Or do you miss someone? Or do you just feel awkward in certain groups? But breaking these questions down and understanding the reasons behind them can actually show you how to feel better. Listen to what your feelings are saying. Now, I'm about to share something with you that I really want you to hear. If you are zoning out, or if you're falling asleep, that's okay. But I want you to lean in on this one. Are you ready? Loneliness. It's like a message from yourself to you, saying that you need something more. I'm going to say that again. Loneliness is like a message from yourself to you, saying you need something more. It could be deeper talks, it could be more real friendships. But paying attention to this can really help you feel more connected. Loneliness is like a message from yourself to you, saying you need something more. And once we begin to see and understand what your needs are, then we have to take the steps. We have to take the steps to connect with others and what's best for you. And one of those ways is looking for what you need. Now that you understand your loneliness better, you can start finding your ways to deal with it. Maybe you can reconnect with old friends, right? Someone you haven't talked to in ages, it seems. Or join a group that shares your hobbies. Or talk to someone who can help, like a counselor. I highly recommend that. And then sometimes we have to make our own chances to meet people. Mm. That's the hard one, right? Sometimes you have to create opportunities for yourself to meet others. This could be, like I said, trying out a new hobby or joining a club or a group or some kind of community day. But doing things like this can lead you to people who like the same things that you do. 
unless you are anticipating someone randomly knocking on your front door and saying, hey, do you want to be friends? You might want to get really comfortable with where you're sitting as you may be there for a while. So change your surroundings if you need to. I mean, if certain places make you feel more alone, think about how you can change that. No, that doesn't mean picking up and moving across the country, but maybe picking up and moving across the neighborhood. Not houses, just location, just people, just activities. Perhaps there's a way to find friends and new activities or these hobbies where you can meet people who like the same things as you do. Because guess what? They do exist. But change your surroundings as you may need. And sometimes the ugly truth is making the first move has to be on you, not waiting for others to reach out to you because they may be in the same position that you are, just waiting for someone to knock on the door. So now you have two people sitting isolated, waiting for someone else to knock on the door when honestly, they're just waiting for you. Make the first move. Sending a simple message or even just asking someone to catch up to start a new connection. Because reaching out doesn't have to be that big of a deal. A lot of times we, we make it that, or we, we say how much work it is. But once we're there, how enjoyable it is. But it's about doing small things that bring you closer to others, right? I mean, every little step that you can take to help build a connection, help build a friendship, make the first move. So I know I've shared a lot of information in this episode. Sometimes too much can be too overwhelming. So if I could summarize three things that can help us understand how to feel more connected and less alone, I, th I think I would put them in the following order. Maybe you can write these down. Number one, what can you do today to feel less lonely? It sounds obvious, but write it down and look at it and start making a list, right? Think about a small step, very small step that you can take right now to start feeling more connected. Maybe it's texting a friend or joining an online group with the same interest. What can you do today to feel less lonely? And then number two, how can being alone help you grow? Oh, I love this one. I mean, being alone all by yourself doesn't have to feel lonely. It could be a chance to learn more about yourself, to pick up a new hobby, to, to, to binge watch some educational videos, or just have some quality time by yourself. How can you turn your alone time into something positive? And then the last step, how can doing things with others and even using technology bring you closer to people? Look for ways to share experiences with others, like starting a book club or playing online games with friends or even watching a movie together online. Yes, people are doing that now. But think about how you can use even just a simple technology like social media or apps or video calls to stay in touch or to keep in touch or build stronger bonds with others. Not all tech is bad even though it's what I say to my kids. But not all tech is bad because you are able to connect with others using tech. Use it wisely. Use it to your advantage. But how can doing things with others and using technology bring you closer to people, right? These questions, they're meant to get you thinking about how to move away from feeling isolated and towards feeling more connected. It's about finding a balance that works for you, where you can enjoy being yourself, but also feel like you're a part of a community. Thank you. Thank you for being here with me today. I want you to remember that moving from feeling lonely to feeling connected, it's something that we all go through. <laughs> Just like Tom Hanks' character in Castaway, right? You've got the strength to find your people and in a place where you belong. And it's normal to feel a bit lost sometimes. It is, but you're not alone in this. 
every little thing you do to understand how you're feeling and to, to reach out to others, it moves you closer to feeling like you are part of something else. And that's important. And it's there. So thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for living. You do belong. I want to remind you that finding our way from being alone to being connected, it's tough. It is. But it's also full of really good moments. And it's worth it. When we admit that we're feeling lonely, start reaching out. And find the right mix of alone time and being with others. Because when we are on our way back to feeling like we belong, there is hardly a better feeling and feeling together. To find more episodes of Comet Down, see where I may be appearing in your area, or to simply want to know where to send me some chocolate chip cookies, visit gometdownpodcast.com. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and not intended, nor should they, serve as a substitute for medical advice or diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other health care provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should only act upon the advice of this physician. Now, I'm an extreme empath by nature, but my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or a physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this in future podcast episodes to aid those needs. So to find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit cometdownpodcast.com. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review or better yet, share it with a friend. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of mental and emotional health. Thank you for listening. Thank you for living. And until next time, be kind to your mind and join me again as we calm it down.